In this tutorial, you'll learn how to avoid one of the most common pitfalls of student writing that leads to academic integrity violations, failing to paraphrase correctly. We'll discuss how to use paraphrasing to avoid plagiarism, when and why you need to cite a paraphrase, and what the characteristics of a good paraphrase are. At Purchase College, citation is everywhere, even written on the walls. The quotations in this image show us that even in everyday life, most people understand they need to give credit where credit is due. You can see here that graffiti writers cited Lady Gaga, Steve Jobs, and Neil Gaiman. One person wasn't sure who said the quote she was sharing, but still felt it was important to explain that it wasn't her own original thought, so she wrote author unknown. Another person joined the conversation and replied with their own ideas. This shows you the culture of intellectual honesty that we have at Purchase College. When you come to college, you're participating in a dialogue of ideas, and this conversation continues inside and outside of class, even in the bathroom walls. Citation may be everywhere, but unfortunately so is plagiarism. Journalists like Fareed Zakaria from CNN and Jonah Lehrer from The New Yorker have been accused of plagiarizing stories and their reputations as writers and journalists have suffered. Students at Harvard have been suspended or expelled for plagiarizing on exams and in one case, a novel. But most student plagiarism is easily avoided if you just know how to properly cite and paraphrase. Let's recap. You already know that plagiarism can be defined as copying and pasting text from a website or other source into your paper, and as passing off somebody else's work or ideas as your own. But did you know that failing to properly cite an idea you've paraphrased is also considered plagiarism? In fact, you need to include a citation whenever you quote a source directly, paraphrase a source, mention an idea that is not your own original thought, or use information from a website, and that includes Wikipedia. So what is this magical thing that we call paraphrasing? Well, put simply, to paraphrase means to restate or summarize an author's ideas in your own words. Writers paraphrase for many reasons, but here's why you should do it. To make your writing more interesting, to avoid quoting super long passages directly, to build a stronger argument, to show that you understand the source, and to connect ideas from various sources to your thesis. And that's really the point after all, to make your writing and your argument stronger by joining a conversation with the scholars who came before you. As with most things, there's good and bad ways to paraphrase. So remember that a good or a strong paraphrase does the following. It explains the importance of the original quotation in your own words. It also links the author's idea to your argument or thesis. It changes the wording and structure of the original in a significant way. Paraphrasing is about more than just using a thesaurus to find synonyms. You have to use your own words and your own writing style. And finally, a good paraphrase always includes a citation. Now it's your turn to recognize what makes a good paraphrase. Read the quotation from the article by Kate Harding below, then read the three options and determine which one does the best job paraphrasing the quotation. The answer will be revealed on the next slide. Just click pause to read the question and then click play when you're ready to see the answer. The correct answer is number three. This sentence does a good job paraphrasing the original by changing the words and the word order. It also shows that the student understood the original quotation and put it in their own words. Here's another example. Once again, read over the quotation from Michelle Bates' article about The Muppet Show. Then, read the three options below and decide which one does the best job paraphrasing the quotation. Once again, click pause to read the options, then click play when you're ready to reveal the answer.
The correct answer is number two. Notice how the author substitutes the word satire for political commentary and literary tradition for long-standing literary and cultural phenomenon of nonsense. They also condense and summarize what the author is trying to get across and show that they've understood the quotation. And of course, they've remembered to include a citation in MLA style. So to recap, plagiarism can be avoided by proper paraphrasing techniques. You should always cite any idea, quotation, statistic, or paraphrase that is not your own original thought. A good paraphrase links the author's idea to your argument or your paper thesis in your own words. Finally, when in doubt, you can always ask a librarian, a learning center tutor, or your professor for help. For more information about paraphrasing and citation, check out some of the Purchase College Library help guides.